YouTube, what is going on? I hope you are well. I often get asked a handful of questions in regard to game sense and knowledge and just overall, how do you win more games? How do you win more gunfights? And today we are gonna look at the end game of your games. End game is probably the most important part of the game. There's a lot that goes into it. There's stuff from early game that will matter in the end game. There's stuff with tips with the ring and positioning. I figured out to go through a bunch of tips to help you out with those end game scenarios because I have been getting asked this question quite often lately. I am going to try to lay out this as simple as possible, even though it is a infinitely complex topic that we are going to be discussing today. As always, though, hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And let's just jump right into the video. I want to first start by defining the end game as end game can kind of have a few different meanings depending on who you are asking. For me, end game is probably somewhere with five squads left, maybe four, maybe six. Kind of depends on if you're playing duos or trios. For this, I'm pretty much only going to be talking about trios so if we are talking about five squads this means three quarters of the lobby is already gone which means most people are probably going to be well geared up unless someone was ratting and this means they're going to have better shields they're going to have more healing items more ammo or they're just going to have more grenades they're just going to have a lot more resources which is going to make fights last a little bit longer for the most part or it will make fights go a little bit faster if you are on top of your game this is of course important to know because end game really isn't based off the time in your match I've had games that end before ring two even starts moving, and I've had other games that go all the way down to the ring completely enclosing itself, and then the match is over. Your games will probably be somewhere around 14 minutes on average. This is kind of what I find, and usually the end game is around ring three or four for me in a pub game. Now that we have that basic definition out of the way, let's start with the first tip. The first tip is going to be to analyze the lobby. This is probably one of the more underrated things that you should be learning, I would say. Just understanding this will help you better approach your engagements. This means you want to understand how many teams there are left in the game and how many players there are left in the game. You want to find out if there are any solo or duo squads or if there are just trios left and you are going to be going up against full squads. You should be locating everyone in the lobby if you can and audibly calling out to your teammates who is remaining, where they are, how many players are over there. Have solid communication and just have a game plan of who you may want to attack first if there are just a few squads left in your game. I figured we should probably go over an example of this just so you are understanding what I'm saying. For this example, we are going to have five squads left, 11 players. Right off the bat, you know there's four players missing from this lobby, so there are definitely some solos or duos out there. For this example, I am also going to be saying that you and both of your teammates are still alive. Keeping that in mind, we know there are four squads with only eight players left, so again, we absolutely know there is a bunch of duos or even solos out there, and not everyone is going to be a trio or maybe not no one at all with this example. So you could have one trio, two duos, or a solo, or maybe it's just four duos. The point is, though, here, you know there are not all full squads left, and this is absolutely advantageous to you. Play with this in mind. Be mindful of people that might be hiding, especially if you are in ranked games. And again, this first tip of analyzing the lobby is absolutely very simple. Anyone can learn this because it's really just not a gameplay related thing. There's no skill involved in doing this. It's just a tactic that you should be aware of. Our second tip is going to be picking your fights. You do not need to pick every fight at the end game. If you see someone at the very end of the match, you do not need to run over there and fight them right this instant. I'm looking at you, Octane, again. Be mindful of who you are fighting at the end game as well. Everyone knows third parties are absolutely crazy in Apex Legends. I don't think I've ever played another game that is quite like Apex Legends where third partying is just so critical to your success in game sometimes. If you are able to third party the last two squads, it is going to be one of the easiest ways to win. I'm not saying you need to do it every time or that you should be doing it every time, but it's something that you need to be mindful of because if you take that second or third squad on and there is one squad left, you are probably going to be the victim of a third party, especially if you are in a later game where the ring is already a little bit smaller. So again, be mindful of this strategy. Some players will frown on you for just waiting for the third party but honestly it is the strategic tactic to help you win more games especially in the end game scenario and honestly of course third partying works at any point in apex legends it doesn't have to be the end game but in the end game is absolutely more critical and it's a little bit more uh, high stakes i'll say because people understand that there's only one squad left if they are fighting and that one squad does get eliminated however this does not mean it's always going to happen sometimes the best way to prevent a third party on you is to start and finish a fight as quickly as possible a lot of times I get asked, you know, how do you prevent third parties? And there's really only one answer I can give you as to how to prevent third parties. And it's really just to finish your fight as fast as possible. As soon as you engage a team and you are shooting, this pretty much just opens like a big bubble around you for like three to 500 meters. I'm not quite sure exactly the distance that you can hear a gunfire, but it is absolutely very far. And as soon as you start engaging people like this, you're probably going to be inclined to get third partied. So if you can push a team and you wipe them one, two, three really fast, you know, within 10 seconds or something like that, that's going to help you out a ton. 
And the final thing, just to kind of keep in mind, and we will go over this in a little bit, but if you can have high ground or have good positioning, this will help you prevent third partying. And this may be actually more advantageous if you do want to take a third party. Maybe you can drop on someone. Maybe you can start getting shots. So your positioning does matter. And again, we'll get to this in a little bit. Before that though, and our third tip is gonna be the ring location. Be mindful of what ring you are in. Once ring three starts closing, anything here and on is pretty deadly. It's no joke, don't get caught in it. You can almost out heal ring three, but you're gonna need a ton of syringes and med kits. And you're gonna have to be popping them rapidly and it will kill you eventually. However, if you are in ring one or ring two and they are closing, you are able to sit in that ring and out heal it. And it's something that you should be aware of. You do not always need to rapidly exit the ring just because you are starting to get hit by it. And there's a lot of movement in Apex Legends that will help you get out of the ring fairly quickly. And I think a lot of people don't really understand this. Exiting the ring quickly could mean you're gonna die by a team that is camping there. So it's okay to sit in the ring and take some damage. You're better off taking a little ring damage, using a little bit more healing, and then getting a superior position where someone really just might not expect you to rotate all the way around a mountain or something like that. And of course, maybe if you run out late, the other team's gonna think that you went somewhere else and they'll just be gone and you'll be able to go right up behind them and shoot them in the back. So it's something just to keep in mind. And these previous tips aren't really specific to end game when it comes to the ring, but this tip right here is absolutely something that will help you with the end game and this is going to be the drop ship path in location to the rings you should always try to remember where you came in from on that drop ship the drop ship absolutely dictates where everyone is going to be landing and just in general who is going to be around you and where they are going to be rotating once you play enough games you're going to understand the general ring formation and what i mean by this is if you play enough you'll have experienced a lot of the rings in apex legends and you're going to get them again and again you'll be able to better plan yourself as to where you are going you'll be able to get better positioning just in your overall game and if you do remember where that dropship was when it does come to something like ring three you're going to better be able to tell where players might be because you are going to know where the players went where the lobby went and this just kind of goes back to when you are flying in you want to at least be giving a little look around so you do understand where players are landing if you guys ever want any more swing by twitch where i do stream i'd love to chat with you over there i try to stream daily it's been rough lately for me but i still stream over there from time to time so go give me a follow and i'd love to answer any questions that you might have and our fourth tip is going to be the previously mentioned positioning and i really just want to give a highlight on positioning as a whole positioning in apex is just absolutely critical to pretty much everything that you're going to be doing in the game having good positioning will help you get better shots on enemies having good position means you're going to be better set up for an end game scenario having good position Positioning means you might be able to survive a little bit longer than your opponents. And this is all going to come with time. You're going to have to play the game a little bit more to understand positioning. But here's a few tips for you. First off, good positioning could mean a few things. This could mean high ground in certain areas. So you just know that you're going to have an overall view of the landscape in front of you. If you're in high ground, you're going to be able to better head peak enemies. And this basically means you're only revealing your upper portion of the body and you can get shots on an enemy and they're going to kind of have to be down low looking up to you so you'll be able to see more of them than they can see of you and this just helps you out with kind of maintaining a little bit of survivability positioning could also mean you're in a location where no one can rotate around to you so this could be in an alley where no one can come from the back this could also mean you're in a position where the ring is behind you so you only need to be concerned about the size in the front of you and again, this does relate with the previous mentioned ring location. If you know the ring locations, you'll be able to better set up in that right spot because you know the end game is going to be in that specific location. And this is kind of hard to get without playing the game a lot, but you can get there eventually. Just play a lot of games and you will understand the overall ring movement and the general kind of path that the ring likes to take from map to map. Positional awareness is one of the hardest and probably most important parts of Apex and it's something that again is going to take you the longest to learn probably out of anything in Apex Legends or really just any shooter game. Put the hours in, you will slowly learn the optimal spots and it will help you out in the long run. I know to some this is going to seem like an impossible task. You know, I've been playing the game since the game came out so I got 30 months of game time over someone like you who maybe are just starting out the game. It can be a little demoralizing but if you're up for the challenge, Stick with it and you will learn those ring locations eventually. Tip number five is gonna have nothing to do with end game or does it? And this is to have a poor mid game. Having a poor mid game or maybe even early game can be a loss right off the bat and you might not even realize it. Not fighting anyone all game long means poor loot, weak shields, not enough healing, not enough ammo, not enough grenades, doesn't really matter. Something won't be optimal. Also, it means you won't have a general feeling of the pulse of the lobby if you aren't fighting anyone. You'll be cold on fighting since you were idle all game long and this isn't good in my opinion. For me, if I don't find anyone all game long and I'm going into the last few squads and I haven't shot my gun yet, 
I just feel really cold and I feel like a pretty bad player because I'm just not warmed up from fighting anyone for the last like 10 to 15 minutes. Also, if you're just doing this because you don't want to take early game fights, you just want to get to the end game, this means you're not going to be improving, which that's kind of what you really want to do, right? You want to improve at the game. So make sure you are taking fights during the early and the mid game. The best way to avoid this, of course, is to not drop crazy hot, but to make sure you're absolutely getting a couple teams to fight. This could mean fighting next to a hot spot. Maybe instead of going to Energy Depot, you're going to go to the Rift, which is a little bit quieter, and then you will rotate rapidly into Energy Depot. Or maybe something like World's Edge, you're not going to Fragment because Fragment is just absolutely crazy, but maybe you're going to something like Landside. Maybe you're going to something like North of Lava Siphon. This is just a couple ideas for you if you are looking for a landing spot that isn't quite so hot but has a lot of good rotations. And if you're noticing by now, it goes back to that ring location where enemy teams are dropping, where they are flying in, understanding, looking around, being aware of enemy locations. This is probably going to be one of the bigger factors of winning, if I am being honest. And I've said this a couple times, but it's just something that is important. If you're not looted up, you're not optimally equipped, then you're going to be at a disadvantage from the enemies. And I was going to do five tips for this video, but let's have a bonus tip for you, if I will say. There is some scenarios, especially in ranked, where you will be in a no-win situation or a position, or in a spot that has a very low chance of a winning outcome. Sometimes pivoting to get a few kills is your best case scenario, and this is something that you just want to be self-aware of. The sooner you realize that you are probably going to be in a no-win position, or if you are already in a no-win position, make a move, don't wait, and most of all, don't sit in the corner. That ain't going to get anything done other than you dying probably at the latest time, which maybe you'll outlast one squad, maybe you'll outlast two squads, but you're still not going to win the game. This is going to be tough to do if you are playing solo, and this will come down to good team coordination because you're going to have to make a big play, and it's going to be a risky play, but that's just kind of what you're going to have to do. If you do this more, you'll get a little bit more comfortable. I do get asked often how, you know, how do you not get nervous in fights, and the only way to not get nervous in fights is by taking fights and putting yourself in that position so you can be a little bit more comfortable. But I'm really just saying all this so you don't get too beat up on losing an endgame. Obviously, I've lost end games. Everyone's lost end games. Pro players have lost them. You're not going to win every game, and it's okay if you are in a no win position. Just try to make the most out of it. And most important of all, if you haven't taken anything from this video, think critically about your game and why you might have lost or why you might have won. If you can analyze your game from this point and you are self aware, being self aware is so important, not just in Apex, but pretty much everything in life. If you can be self aware of the goods and the bads, you will be better off in your future games. So what part of your game are you struggling with and what would you like me to cover next? Let me know down in the comments as your feedback, comments, and questions all matter to the content that I am producing for you guys. If you have any more questions, hop into our community discord. You can also find someone to play there. There's lots of people in there and there's always someone asking to play with someone else. We would love to have you. Till next time though, I do hope I see you live in the streams. Peace out.